In 2006, 26-year-old Kyle McDonald traded a paperclip for a house. Well, that's not quite right. He didn't trade a paperclip for a house directly. He traded his paperclip for a fish-shaped pen. That pen he then traded for this horrific doorknob. He then suckered somebody into giving him a camp stove for it. And that camp stove he traded for a generator. He kept trading what he had for items of greater and greater value until eventually, after 14 trades, he'd managed to barter a role in a movie for a two-story farmhouse. If Kyle McDonald could trade a paperclip for a house, then think of all the possibilities out there. You could trade a thumbtack for a Ferrari, a roll of tape for a yacht, or maybe you could trade a Bidoof for an Arceus. This is Agatha, and this is Bagatha. These two are the Bidoofs I'm going to be trading up for Arceus. The key to McDonald's trading strategy was his incremental increase in value with each trade. There are a lot of Pokémon. Some are obviously more valuable than others. Mythical Pokémon, like Arceus, are the rarest and hardest to find, and by extension the most valuable. But as you move away from legendaries, and move into your everyday Pokémon, it's not exactly clear what's most valuable. If you haven't traded Pokémon in a while, you might not know that the GTS, currently housed inside the Pokémon storage app, Pokémon Home, has trade ranking statistics. These are several lists of Pokemon traded on the GTS ranked in terms of things such as popularity, rarity, and frequency of trades. Let's start by looking at the list of top 50 Pokemon, excluding special Pokemon. The number one Pokemon on this list is Furfru. Now you might be thinking to yourself, I remember Furfru. It was kind of unremarkable. Why would it be number one on the list? Look at the fucking drip, man. Hey, look at the fucking drip. Fucking fly, you shit me! Burfru is unique because it has 10 distinct forms, each with a different hairstyle. If you zoom out and look at the whole top 50 list, you'll see that 7 of the top 50 and 4 of the top 5 are all Pokemon with several forms changing appearance. Along with Pokemon that have several visual variants, you can also see a significant amount of regional variants filling up the list. Most of these regional variants are new, recently added in Legends Arceus. In fact, all new Pokémon added in Legends Arceus have a spot on this list. If we look at the top 50 list, including regional variants, you will see that Enamorous, the new legendary added in Legends Arceus, takes the number one spot. With an idea of what makes Pokémon valuable in mind, I started to trade. For Agatha, I requested a Starly, and for Bagatha, I requested a Shinx. I picked these two Pokémon because they're both common, and found in the starting area alongside Bidoof in both Legends Arceus and Diamond and Pearl. Sure enough, those trades went through without a hitch. For the Starly, I then asked for a Geodude. And for Shinx, I asked for a Ghastly. When I checked back in, I found both of those trades were a success. The Ghastly was only a level 1, so I wasn't too impressed, but the Geodude had me excited. It was an Alolan Geodude. As I said, regional variants tended to be more valued on the GTS, so I figured I'd be able to request a bigger fish for this Geodude. The Sui and Growlithe was easy enough to get in Legends Arceus, so I figured people wouldn't be too hesitant to trade one. In Legends Arceus, there's no way to breed Pokémon, so all new Pokémon and Hisuian forms are guaranteed to be caught, not bred. That means in the case of Hisui and Growlithe, he's guaranteed to be at least around level 30. I put my trades, and sure enough they went through, the Geodude becoming a level 62 Growlithe, and my Ghastly I traded for a Kadabra. While I was browsing the GTS, I kept seeing people asking for legendaries in return for really low level Pokemon. And I thought, does that actually work? So I pulled out another Bidoof, and I put him in the GTS with a request for a Dialga. Then I just wanted to see if anyone would bite. In the meantime, I started to trade like a machine. Before long, I'd made my way up to cover legendaries. I had a Dialga and a Reshram. Already some great mileage out of two Bidoofs. But it got better. Someone had decided to accept my trade offer and gave me the Dialga for my third Bidoof.
Getting a Dialga for a Bidoof was crazy and cool, but it made me reconsider the value of covered legendaries. If someone was willing to just give one away, were they worth less than I thought? Kind of. Pokemon Go has made it much easier to get your hands on these legendaries. Because of that, the most valuable cover legendaries are the ones that aren't yet in Pokemon Go. At this point in time, that only includes the Sun and Moon legendaries and the Sword and Shield legendaries. That makes those legendaries the ones we're aiming for. I traded my new Dialga for a Xerneas. Xerneas for a Zekrom, and Zekrom for Sogaleo. Because Sogaleo was rarer than other cover legendaries, I wanted to see what type of offers were out there for it. Most of these offers were nothing to ride home about, but a couple of the offers were shiny Pokemon. Normally, I'd jump right on that. A shiny Pokemon, even non-legendary, is extremely valuable. Except, the shiny Pokemon was a Gyarados. Gyarados is the lamest shiny, because literally everybody has one. You get it for free in Pokemon Gold and Silver. But there was one more shiny available, a Magikarp. In my head, I thought this would appeal to collectors, people who wanted every Pokemon shiny, including all evolutions. With that thought in mind, I traded away my Sogaleo. I was wrong. No one wants a shiny Magikarp. It just sat and sat and sat. In the meantime, I started making trades with my other legendaries. After a few more days of trading, I finally had two Enamorous. I'd gone from Bidoof all the way to the most popular Pokemon on the GTS. But I couldn't just trade an Enamorous for an Arceus. The GTS does not allow you to trade mythical Pokemon. So to get my hands on Arceus, I had to look at outside sources. I joined Pokemon trading discords and started to browse Pokemon trading subreddits. Despite Enamorous being the most popular Pokemon on the GTS, there just weren't that many people interested in giving up an Arceus for one. Every once in a while I'd see somebody looking for an Enamorous, willing to trade an Arceus, but I was always just too late. Because I was having no luck finding anyone looking for an Enamorous, I decided to make some posts offering it out. While I was waiting for anyone to respond to those, I put my attention on getting rid of that shiny Magikarp. Thankfully, I was able to pawn it off for a Dialga. With that Dialga, I traded it for a Lunala, then to Glysteria, then to Kubfu. I decided to hold on to my Kubfu instead of trying to trade it for an Enamorous like I had previously. I figured, if nobody wants Enamorous, having three of them wouldn't do me much good. So I traded my second Enamorous for a shiny Ho-Oh. Again, I didn't have much luck for a little while. I messaged some more people, I hit a few more dead ends, and then finally, someone reached out to me saying they were interested in trading my Enamorous for their Arceus. And that trade went Wonderfully. And with that, I had successfully traded my way from Bidoof to an Arceus. My trading adventure was over. If you're interested, here's a timeline of all the trades I made while doing this. A Kubfu, Shiny Ho, and an Arceus are not a bad haul in the slightest. Trading from a regular Pokemon all the way to a Legendary is totally doable if you're willing to put in a little bit of time. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, stick around, and catch whatever I put up next. Until next time, take care.